Good afternoon. Today we are going to take a small segue from our quadratic unit and we're going to talk about complex numbers. Complex number is any number that can be written in the form a plus bi and I'm just going to real quick put a note here. This is actually called standard form for a complex number. A complex number can be written in the form ax a plus bi where the a and B are real numbers, and the I is what we call an imaginary unit. An imaginary unit can be defined as I squared. It's a number that when squared will give you negative one. And the principal root, so if I was to take the square root of this equation, I'll take the square root of both sides, the principal root or the one that we will use most frequently, the square root of negative one is actually equal to I. So here's your definition of what the I is. And this is going to seem a little strange, this whole complex number stuff. But guys, it's not that weird to work with. Here are some examples. So 3 plus 2i is an example of an imaginary number, or an imaginary number, with some other numbers creating a complex number. Here's another example. So in this case, I have 4 minus square root 3. I and the I is not under the radical symbol, it's just off to the side. We usually put the I the, at, in the last position in our terms, in our polynomials. And there's another one, 7 minus I. So those are just examples of complex numbers. Complex numbers use imaginary numbers. All right. So what's the big hype with complex numbers? Well, complex numbers can be used if you if you just take a moment, have you ever factored a quadratic using quadratic formula or where you had an answer that had a negative under the radical uh, or under the radical symbol? And of course you have. And we said that there were no solutions. Well, we misspoke slightly. There are solutions. They're just complex number solutions or imaginary solutions. So by being able to manipulate and work with complex numbers, we have a whole new set of solutions that we can find when factoring quadratics or when solving quadratics. So what do, what do I mean by simplify? Well, what I would like to do is write the square root of negative five using a complex number. To do that, I'm gonna to have to split this kid up and I'm gonna write him as positive five times the square root of negative one. Just like when we simplify radicals that have perfect squares, the nice thing about doing this is that I can rewrite this in a different form. And the different form I can write this in, the square root of negative one, we have defined as i. Now I can't do anything about the square root five, so I would just leave him as square root five i. And it's very much like what you see right up here. You might also see it written as i square root five. Either of those are equivalent. They're both equivalent because multiplication is associative and commutative. I can do it again here. This one actually simplifies pretty neatly. I can write this as the square root of 81 times the square root of negative 1. We know that the square root of negative 1, by definition, can be rewritten as i. And I know that the square root of 81 is 9. So this term simplifies to 9i. What about this one? Well, this one is negative. And then I can break this negative 18 into the square root of 18 times the square root of negative 1. The square root of negative 1, we know, can be rewritten as i. The negative is just a negative. And if you feel more comfortable, go ahead and put a 1 in front of there, because that's just the number 1 that math people are typically too lazy to write. And then I can break square root of 18 into the square root of nine times the square root of two. So now I have broken this, this negative square root of negative 18 into lots of different factors. I'm gonna rewrite this as negative one times the square root of nine can be simplified to three. I can't do much with the square root of two, so I'm gonna leave him alone. And then I have my here. And then further, I might write this as negative 3 square root 2 i. And that would be the simplified expression that is equivalent to negative square root negative 
18. All right, so that's how we can simplify uh, simplify expressions using complex numbers. Another concept that is interrelated to complex numbers is the idea of a complex conjugate. And a complex conjugate, move this up so y'all can see, complex conjugate is a set of two solutions to a quadratic with non-real solutions. So a quadratic like the negative 80, square root of negative 81. Um, but in this case, the two solutions have the same constants or the same coefficients. They're both imaginary, have, both have imaginary components, and they have different signs. So it's kind of like a difference of two squares, but it involves a complex number, and those are called complex conjugates. When we are identifying complex conjugates, um, the complex conjugate will always have the opposite sign of what you see here. So that's just something to keep in mind. In this particular case, you'll notice that the a's stay the same. So the complex conjugate of 8 plus 5i would be 8. The 5 stays the same. The i stays the same. But here, I would use an 8 minus 5i. For this one, I'm going to change the sign. So now it's positive. I'll go ahead and put the positive, even though you don't see math people do that. And it's just 6i. So you would also see this maybe as just 6i. This one's a little bit strange. Remember I told you that we typically put the i in the back. So I'm going to just go ahead and rewrite this. Notice in our form up here in standard form, we always have the i at the back. So I need to write this in standard form. That would be square root of 3 plus i. And now I can write my complex conjugate. It has the same a term, it has the same b term, and it has a different sign. So this is my complex conjugate. I'm going to go ahead and box these in so you're not confused later. This one is already in standard form, so he's easy to write. I keep my a term. I keep my b term. And if you wanted to, you could write this as square root 3i or i square root 3, doesn't matter. Here I need a different sign. This one is not in standard form, so it needs to be rewritten in standard form, which would be the square root of 2 plus 4i. And now my complex conjugate is just keeps the a term, keeps my b term, and uses a different sign. So that's it, folks. Those are the complex conjugates. Let's see what we can do with all this good stuff. All right, what we're going to look at next is how you add and subtract complex numbers. Real numbers can only be added and subtracted with real other real numbers. And imaginary numbers can only be added and subtracted with other imaginary numbers, just like we do with variables and constants. So, Otherwise, we use the same rules that we use for adding polynomials. They're really not much different. I can add, I know the first thing I notice is this is, this is a, an addition statement. So 4 plus 2i plus negative 6 plus negative 7i. The parentheses are superfluous in this case. Don't let them confuse you. 4 minus 6, I could rewrite that as 4 minus 6. And then I could take my imaginary terms and I could write those in an addition statement, positive 2i minus 7i. And so all I've done is I've just rearranged it so I've grouped things according to like terms. My 6, uh, four, sorry, 4 minus 2 would give me negative 2 and 2i minus 7 would be minus 5i. And that is a simplified expression. I can do the same thing here. I need to be careful here because there is this negative one that I have to distribute before or while I am grouping my like terms. So again, if I find my constants, it would be five, and then a negative one times a negative two would be a positive two. So this is really five plus two. And then my imaginary terms, would be negative 2i and a negative 1 times negative 3i is a positive 3i 
And from here, I can simplify negative 2i plus 3i is just a positive i. And i plus 2 is 7. So my simplified answer would be 7 plus i. Just making sure I got my, my negatives correct there. OK, and if I look at the next one, we're going to do a couple more. I'm not going to do all of them. But if I look at the next one, the first thing I notice is that, um, well, it's all addition. So I can add these two numbers. I don't have to do anything fancy. 1 minus 1 actually gives me a 0. I'm going to add my two imaginary numbers, negative 3i plus 3i also adds up to zero. So this particular expression can be simplified to just zero. Don't be afraid of zero. It's a number two, man. When I look at this one, I notice that there's only one constant, and that's just the negative three. So he stays the same. And then I'm gonna add my two imaginary terms. Five i minus six i is just negative one i. I'm not going to do the next two. I think y'all can, can handle that. Um, but if you need to check your answers, then go ahead and check the online notes because they have some worked out solutions for those last two. All right, just one more thing for today. Let's work on multiplying complex numbers. We've already added and subtracted and we simplified, so why not multiply? Here are some things to keep in mind. Real numbers can be multiplied by imaginary numbers. This is very similar to what we learn about simplifying and multiplying polynomials. So the rules haven't really changed. We always simplify after we do our multiplication, and that's whether we have just general terms, constants, polynomials, whatever the case may be. And I'm going to need to remember that when I see i squared, that can be simplified as a plain old negative 1. So this is really the only additional step that we are adding to our mul polynomial multiplication. All right, so I am going to use distributive property. I'm going to multiply negative 2i times 2, and that gives me negative 4i. I'm next going to multiply negative 2i times negative 4i. Negative times negative is positive. 2 times 4 is 8, and i times i gives me i squared. So now I need to simplify can't really simplify negative 4i, but I can remember that i squared can be rewritten. So I'm going to keep my first term, sorry. Um, and I'm going to keep the 8 because that's just a, a coefficient. But I can rewrite i squared as negative 1. That's its definition. So now my resulting polynomial becomes, ah, that should be just a negative 8. So negative 4i minus 8. And I would like to write it in standard form. So I would write it this way. Not too horrible. Normally we go left to right. Let's go crazy. Let's live on the edge. And let's go down. I mean, why not, right? So the first thing I want to point out to you here is that in these two binomials, I, the a terms are the same, the b terms are the same, and they have different signs. So this is what we talked about on the previous page. This is a conju. I don't know how to cut. That's a J. That's a G. Conjugate pair. And so now we will get to see the cool thing that happens when you have a conjugate pair. I'm going to do my distributive property like I normally would. 2 times 2 is 4. I'm going to multiply 2 times negative 9i negative 18i. I'm going to choose a different color for friends and giggles. 9i times 2 is a positive 18i. And then the last one I notice is 9i times negative 9i is a negative 81i squared. The other thing I notice is my green pen is not working very well. Let's try a different green. And i times i is actually i squared. So I need to remember that. OK, so now I'm going to start some simplifying. 4 is just 4. And there are no other constants. Negative 18i and a positive 18i give me 0i. Go simplify. You will never see anybody but your crazy math teacher actually write 0i. We just leave it out. And then I can rewrite this as negative 
but I can substitute a negative one for the I squared because of the definition of I squared. And so what I end up with is four, skip that, plus 81, which actually simplifies to a plain old comfortable number 85. So when we have a conjugate pair, the magic of a conjugate pair is that my middle terms, my imaginary numbers will drop out. And that's really useful when we start talking about rational numbers and other interesting things later in the year. All right, folks, one more. Let's look at this one. I'm gonna distribute and I get six i. I'm going to distribute again, two i times negative five i would be a negative 10 i squared. Hopefully you're getting the swing of this by now. Six i is just six i, negative 10 is just negative 10, but I can use the definition of an imaginary number and rewrite this as negative one. Simplify from here, I get six i plus 10, and when writing it in standard form, I would switch those and come up with six, 10 plus six i. Folks, I've done the other three, and they're provided online with a key to the notes. I encourage you to go ahead and try them on your own, and then check your answers to see what questions you might still have, and um, give you an opportunity to pat yourself on the back, because I'm pretty sure you're gonna find that these aren't um, as bad as you might have thought they would be and that you're pretty darn good at them.